Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you my process for painting on paper. Normally I'm painting on an 8x10 panel canvas. In my larger tutorials, my bigger, fuller tutorials, I'm actually painting on wrapped canvas. There's lots of different benefits to painting on all different surfaces, but one reason I'm showing this today is that my number one excuse that people give me for not painting more often is that the cost of the materials is too high, and I totally get that. It is expensive for a lot of canvas and all that. It's hard, hard to store it, but with this, if you're painting on paper, you are going to have a really easy time storing it. It's super inexpensive and it's going to be good. So I'm going to show you my process. Now I recommend prepping your paper in batches. That way you can just pick up, pick up a piece of paper and paint when you want to. And these are all eight by 10, just like what I use in my tutorials. And I recommend getting a gesso for the paper because it's watercolor paper, which is really cheap. It's actually gonna not it's harder for the paper to hold the paint versus the canvas so this helps the paper hold the paint and gives you a nicer finish and gives you a cleaner edge on your tape so you also want to have some paper the paint, painter's tape which i usually use kind of a quarter inch or half inch or something not too thick and again i have white gesso so you have your paper you want to make sure that you're using the side you want to use. They have different textures on some of them. And you're just going to grab a flat brush and your gesso. And I am getting a scoop of gesso that I have. And you're going to apply it to the paper in a nice, th thin, even coat. So that's step one. Apply your gesso. However you want to get it on, but you want to make sure you don't leave any like chunks or anything like that. Now the paper will buckle a little bit. That's just, it doesn't matter. Like even the thickest paper is going to do that. That means it's just going to bend a little bit. And I'll give you some tips after on how to keep that from being an issue. Or at least what I do with it. And every artist does different things to, they've kind of figured out different things that works for them and that and with their time and their budget and their style and all that. So there's always different little tips and tricks and advice. And it's not about it being right or wrong or the only way to do things. It's just the way I like to do them. So I'm sharing that. And the reason I like doing this again is because I feel like it holds the paint better and it gives you a better finish with the tape. Because a lot of times the paper will tear with the, with the tape, but this seems to help prevent that. And again, this is a really inexpensive paper. So if you had a little bit of a nicer paper, that will also help with the tearing. And then you wanna make sure that's dry all the way. So I'm gonna blow dry it just to speed up the process. So once your paper is really dry, I usually just paint them and then leave them to dry for, you know, like overnight or something. But you can do it, you could do it right in the moment if you wanted to. You just want to make sure it's not super wet before you start painting. And then you want to have your painter's tape. Now you don't have to do this, but it just makes painting on paper a lot easier because otherwise the paper slides around. It's not, doesn't have the weight of the canvas. So it's easier to add tape. So I usually just tape it to my little desk right here. And I, I go like half on the paper and half on the desk. approximately it doesn't have to be exact and then I'm just going to go around to each edge and do the same thing and you just want to gently push And I like to go in a circle. So I'll go like bottom, right, top, left, or you could go the other way, or you could go clockwise. It doesn't really matter which way you go.
And this is like so much fun if you are enjoying like taping. I don't know why, but it's really fun. And then taking it off is really fun too. So just make sure you press it gently um, to make sure that the tape is down and it will give you a nice border on your finished piece. So once you have that all ready to go, you're ready to paint your painting. So I'm going to do a really simple, really just kind of basic thing to demonstrate how the painting on paper goes and feels. And then we will remove the tape and I'll give you some tips for how to keep it. We're just going to do a really easy little sailboat painting. Now I have my primary colors plus black and white as usual, and I'm still using this liquid text basis, which is like really inexpensive, but really just, it really works good. I'm gonna start with a light blue and I'm using my, my one inch square. And again, I on if I'm on paper, I tend to not use as much water to help with the buckling issue, but you can still use a little bit. Don't get crazy. And I'm just going to dust in some blue in the sky here. Down. And then we're going to make the water blue too. So we're going to take a little bit of blue in the sky. And then I'm going to pull the horizon in about one third of the way. And this is going to be my ocean water. And we're doing so simple and abstract right here. Just, so, just to demonstrate painting on paper really easily. Not getting too crazy. And then maybe I want some purples in there. So I'm going to add red to my blue and I want it to be a really pink purple. So I have mostly red and white with a little bit of blue. So it's like this pinky purple pink color. Really pretty. I'm just sweeping that in around the blue at the top of the canvas. Notice how I'm just painting over the tape on the paper. So easy. You can always add a little more white, get some lighter shades, and then maybe you want some darker shades of purple too. So you can just use less white and add a little more blue to your mix. I'll give you a little bit of a darker purple. Let me get that up in the sky here. In the upper part. A little bit down here. See how I'm just playfully adding it? No big deal really low key here. Let me put this a little bit right on the horizon. A little bit of purple. And then maybe a little bit at the bottom of that, maybe lighter purple or something. You know, you can really spread these colors around because we're being abstract with the paint. Now, once I have that in, I'm going to clean the brush and go into some like yellows and that kind of thing. So you can take some yellow and white. I'm going to pop that in the blue, the pink. I'm just being really kind of wherever about this. And then I'm going to add a little bit down below from side to side. And then I'm going to add a little bit of pink to the yellow and white to create a peach color. So yellow, white, and, and red mixed together. It's going to make peach. And that looks pretty. So I'm going to put that in maybe a little bit over by the pink here. And go up here. Maybe you want to have a little more red. Just add more red so you can change your colors a little bit. And I'm going to add that same kind of peachy color to get the rest of the bottom filled in. And then what happens in this point is that maybe I have some parts that look a little unblended or it looks really blocky. So I like to go in and use white to help with that. And I want to add a sun too, so I'm going to dip my finger in white and I'm going to put a sun right in the middle of the sky here and by just tapping it and then wiggling it in a circle, just 
rolling my finger in a circle to create a sun. I have a sun. And then go ahead and add maybe some white to the in-between spaces while your paint is not totally dry. So you can even use a, like, a, like a light pink or a light blue to go in between your colors. So that's sometimes helpful, but I'm just gonna dust a little bit of white in there. And that's just to make sure that it's kind of broken up and you have some light parts in your sky. It just helps soften everything. I'm not overdoing it, but I'm getting it in there. Same on the bottom. So I'm going to have some white kind of plugging into the water. Anywhere where you feel like there's not enough paint, this is going to be really helpful. I'll sweep it in. And then maybe I go for some pink too, though. I want to have a little bit more pink in this painting. So I'm going to put a little bit more pink down here. So easy to layer. And then, so anywhere you feel like it's a little stuffy or it needs bro broken up, use the colors like pink or blue. Those are going to be really versatile in this particular painting to help make it look a little better. And then again, white is helpful too. So whatever you got to do. I'm going to pull a little more light blue in the sky. And we're almost done. This one's going to be so simple. I'm really not going to go too crazy. Let's see, I can pull some blue over those other colors. Pull it out. Looks kind of cool. It's so fun. So, and a lot of times people, they, they don't create because they don't know they want to do and they think it has to be right in order for them to do it. And I'm here to just be like, no, it, it just, you just need to do it. And there's a great story I like to tell, which I've heard elsewhere on the internet, which I think is a great story for my line of work, which is there is a class of pot makers, one class, so two different classes, one class is told to make the best pot they can make just make one like the best one and that's your job for this semester and then the other class was just make as many pots as you possibly can just make as many pots as you can don't worry about it being even good just make as many as you can and at the end of the semester the the class with the best pots or the best pot who had the best pot was the ones who just made a ton because they weren't really worried about the outcome and that's how it is you sometimes and they just did it a lot so the more you do something the easier it gets and the less attachment you have to the outcome the easier it is as well so let's pop a little sailboat in let's do some blue and red mixed together for like a darker purple and i'm using a small round brush now and i'm just going to go over here to the right and make a little u shape or a smiley face let's say and then we'll put a little line on top of that It's going to be our little base for the sailboat. And then we're going to put right from the center of that, I'm going to make a vertical line for the mast. And then maybe add a little extra red to change the shade. And I'm going to pull a little triangle on the right. Just connecting to the mast. Same thing on the left, but maybe this one's a little smaller. And see if I can make this little triangle shape. You could have little lines pulling from the corners down to the boat for like little ropes, or you could just leave it the silhouette shape. It's totally fine. And then you're going to paint those sails in.
And if you want to add a little bit at the bottom, I always have to go overboard here. I'm always like, I'm going to make this really simple and then I go crazy. But at the bottom, you can make, make like a little rock. So maybe I want like a little rock coming right here. Just make a riggedy top and then a straight horizontal line at the bottom. And you can do a couple little shapes. So notice how I make a little diagonal wiggly line. And then I basically underline from the edge, making a straight horizontal line. You can put as many little rocks on the shore as you want. Just making little horizontal lines and then putting little mountains on top of them. That's all it is for a rock. I love painting rocks. So easy. And then you can even have some like little little grass coming up or something like pull do some little tiny poles coming up here. Little wispies. You don't have to, but it does add a little bit of fun character. Everything's optional. And then you can even add some birds in the sky. So anything you want to add, you can put some little birds up here. All you have to do is make little tiny V's or M's. And then it looks like little tiny birds making it really subtle. And then if you want to punch up your colors a little bit, your contrast, add a little bit of black to your shadow colors, which would be the sailboat and do like the underside of the sailboat, the underside of the rocks. So don't paint it all because you want some parts to look lighter and we'll do some highlights too, and then we'll call it done. A little bit of more extra boost of darkness at the bottom of the rocks. And then what you can do is you can make a, sh a highlight color with like light purple for the boat. So if I add, or you can even just use pink or something, whatever. Just anything that looks lighter than the black. And then you're going to put a little dash of that towards the top of the shapes. You can do it on the top of the rocks. And then you can even make a little shadow for the boat by adding maybe some more blue or something. You want it to be not too dark of a color for the reflection. And then I'm going to go right under the boat and just go from side to side and make it come to a point. So it's just genuinely like a reflection of that. So see how we have a little reflection and then you can just finish off with some pure white on the tip of the small brush. Make sure it's clean before you do this and then just add some more like little white highlights in the water here, especially along the shore, like right where the blue starts to turn into like the sand color. You can even add a little bit more white to the sun to make it a little brighter. And if you want, you can even go in and add some more like light colored little brush strokes to the sky for like the cloud look. However you want to do it, but I'm going to call it done. So that's just a quick little like, OK, we painted on the paper and now we're going to remove the tape, which is the funnest part. And I don't like to wait for it to dry to do this part. But what I'll do is I'll come from the reverse. So if I added the bottom, the right, the top, and then the left was the last piece of tape I added, I'll remove the last piece of tape I added first. So the left would get removed first. And when I pull it off, I pull it straight back. So I go flat like that, pull it flat. Don't pull it up and away from the paper. You're going to pull it flat against the surface that the tape is on. So it should be pulling like that and be really gentle, but see how you get a pretty good edge with that. And it, it, it honestly, it doesn't always turn out that way if you don't prep the paper or if you're not using the right kind of paper. So you got to be careful. Just 
gently pulling. Uh, again, if you pull straight up, it can rip the paper and things like that. So this is just, and it, or it could smudge the paint. So this is another reason just to be very careful and do it this way. There you go. And I have a really nice border on that. And we just got really simple with that painting but there you have it you can paint on paper and it doesn't have to be super expensive or crazy or take up a lot of space now once you have this ready let it dry all the way you'll notice that it's going to kind of crinkle and buckle a little bit but what i usually do is i'll put it put something on top of it like a book um or you can put some like a piece of paper and then put a book you don't want to like it to like stick to anything so you can even put like a piece of parchment paper or something that's like not gonna stick to it but definitely wait for it to dry before you do that anyway so it should be totally dry and then you can put it something on it that will help keep it from bending too much because when it dries it's gonna it'll probably bend a little bit but if you put something on it it'll dry flat and then you'll be good and then these are a lot easier to frame too you can just put it in a a regular photo frame very inexpensive and they look really nice you can sign it you can give them as gifts you can even paint on paper you can like fold it and make a greeting card there's so many things you can do painting on paper but I love making these little pictures and it's just again it's a little less expensive than painting on canvas so there's always options there's always ways around to create really beautiful stuff on a budget. You just have to know where to start and what to do and how to prep it. And then you're gonna get really, really nice results for a really, really low cost. So I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you painting on paper if Canvas is out of your budget. And I, you, again, any of my tutorials you could use, even though I'm painting on Canvas, you could still do it with this prep work for the paper. You can do it on paper too. So hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching, bye.